I was recently informed about this shooting that occurred in Milwaukee from one of my subscribers. And when it comes to stuff like this, I always say I don't like to prematurely come out and just straight out make a video talking about it because I can have the wrong information. I used to do that. And then I would have to always do a retraction. And I said, I want to go straight forward with it without having to do that. Because when it comes to mass shootings, we've always attributed to mainly it being palm colored people who were doing the mass shootings and on record they are the main ones that are doing it but there's always going to be some instances where it will not be them who is committing a mass shooting such as this case right here now in case y'all don't know there was a mass shooting that happened in milwaukee at a miller Coors, uh plant of course you know that you know they make the miller light Coors beer and everything like that and this is the guy right here whose name is Anthony N. Farrell, who committed the shooting in which he had shot and killed five of his co-workers. Now, based on what I've heard, they said he had a long running dispute with one of the co-workers. And as far as the other four, I guess they were just in the line of fire and he just killed them. And six people are now total dead because he ended up turning the gun on himself and he killed himself. Now, that's all I know so far, but I'm going to go ahead and read this article so we can get go ahead and get some more additional information. The gunman who killed five co-workers and then took his own life at Milwaukee's Miller Coors Complex and had worked there for 17 years and had a long running dispute with another employee. So it sounds like to me, like I said, this was a target. Anthony N. Farrell, age 51, shot dead his colleagues at the headquarters of the brewing company, now known as Molson Core Beverage Company, on Wednesday afternoon. Farrell had worked as an electrician at the company for 17 years. A co-worker who asked not to be named told the outlet that Farrell had been involved in a long-running dispute with one of the victims prior to the shooting. Farrell believed he was being discriminated against because he was black, the co-worker said. Now, let me stop right there. One thing I can always notice is that when it comes to a lot of these mass shootings or anything that involves a black person where they kill a group of people like this, usually it always goes back to them being discriminated against on the job by one of their palm colored co-workers. And they usually always go back and they get that person that they wanted, but they'll make sure to get some others along the way, I guess, if they try to stop them, because, you know, that's usually how this thing works. Unlike when it comes to the palm colored mass shooter, they're just doing it because, you know, fuck it. They just want to do it. Usually there is no motive or no solid motive behind it. Or if it is, it usually is a very racist motive behind it. The victim, Farrell, had the ongoing dispute with had taken issue with the gunman frequently watching films on his phone during the workday, according to the co-worker. Both Farrell and that victim had also accused one another of stealing tools or tampering with their computer equipment. Farrell had been an electrician for 20 years after being honorably discharged from the U.S. Coast Guard, where he served from 1987 to 1991. Police were searching the three bedroom home where he lived with his wife and children on Thursday. The suspect's neighbor, Erna Ronspies, or Ronspies, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, cried as she stood at her front door looking at the police tape around her neighbor's home. He was like a son to me, she said as she wiped her eyes. I don't know what triggered this. Let's pray for everyone. She said the gunman was a good husband and father and helped his neighbor by doing eye jobs and repairs. He would come over and fix anything, she said. This is unreal. He w- Authorities offered few details of the circumstances surrounding the shooting and no explanation for what might have triggered the carnage. Workers at the plant said Farrell seemed fine in the days before he stormed in an open fire. Earlier reports said Farrell had been fired earlier in the day and he later returned with a gun fitted with a silencer. Authorities offered to em- no immediate motive for the attack and have not yet released any details about the shooter or how long the shooting unfolded. None of the victims have been officially identified. Police who were still contacting relatives said identities would not be released for at least 24 hours. No one was wounded beyond those who were killed. 
When the shooting broke out, employees say they were ordered to find a safe place to hide. One of the employees said they received an email saying the shooter was located in the stairwell of one of the brewing facility buildings. Officers worked for hours to clear more than 20 buildings in the complex where more than a thousand people work. The incident occurred at a sprawling complex that includes a mix of corporate offices and brewing facilities. Molson Corps CEO Gavin Hattersley said in a statement, unfortunately, I am devastated to share that we lost five other members of our family this in this tragic incident. There are no words to express the deep sadness many of us are feeling now. He said the office will be closed for the rest of the week and the brewery shuttered for the time being to give people time to cope. 45 addressed the shooting before speaking at the White House about his administration's efforts to combat the coronavirus. Our hearts break for them and their loved ones, the president said. We send our condolences and we'll be with them. It is a terrible, terrible thing. The FBI and the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives were among the agencies who responded to the shooting. A group of brewery employees gathered at a nearby bar to talk about what had happened after the shooting. We are all a family. We work a lot of hours together, so we're all very sad, says Selena Kirka, a brewery employee who was about to start her shift when the complex went on lockdown and she was turned away. It's just weird because nine times out of ten, you're going to know the shooter said another employee thomas milner it's a tight-knit family within the brewery we all interact with each other milner all was also on his way to work when the shooting happened and he was turned away james boyles said told the milwaukee journey journal sentinel that his wife lasagna ragdale ragdale's works at molson Coors in the claims department she was texting from inside the facility and told her husband that there was an active shooter and she was locked in a room with a bunch of her co-workers so that's pretty much the entire story well as much as they're releasing right now as it pertains to the situation but like i say notice that every time a shooting is involved and a black person is the gunman of this caliber <clears throat> it usually goes back to there was most likely discrimination in the workplace and he probably went to HR and complained and nobody did anything, which is very common. The discrimination is definitely very common. And he was like, okay, enough is enough. I'm about to do what I have to do. And a lot, you can tell that when it comes to things like this, this is a last resort for them. This isn't like a first impulse thing. And this had to have been an ongoing thing. And he was just tired of having to deal with it. Now, I saw on the news this evening that they did reveal one of the victims, and I can only assume that the victim they revealed was the one he had the dispute with. They didn't reveal the other four. So, like I said, this was a target. He was going after this person in particular. He got who he wanted, but, you know, four others fell because they were probably trying to fight him off, and he just killed them in the midst of all of that happening. And he probably went in there with the intention knowing he wasn't going to make it out alive. So when he left his home that day, you know, and, you know, said goodbye to his wife and his kids, he literally meant goodbye as in I'm not coming back alive. But of course, you know, in that moment, you don't you don't think that, you know, when it's in that situation. So and he probably kept it real calm and cool and collected and didn't let no one know what he was about to do. And like I said, this probably wasn't a first impulse. This was probably a last resort for him. And he probably didn't want it to come to this. But when push came to shove, he felt that he did the only thing he felt that he could do in that situation. And that was, you know, to take out the person he felt had wronged him. But like I said, he also knew at the same time he wasn't going to uh, make it out alive, which is why he killed himself. And he would probably rather be dead than have to go to jail, which he most likely would have gone to jail for life for that in that instance. Now, watch. You're going to have a lot of these uh, talking heads and y'all know who I'm talking about going to say that's why, you know, black people are so violent and all this and the third. Now, remember, I did a video a couple months ago where they were talking about 13, 50, 92, that 13 percent of the population commits 50 percent of the crime in that 92 where they said that black people commit 92 percent of the interracial crime against other um, white people. How much you want to bet they're going to pull out that 92 BS, because that's all it is, is some BS, and use it for this talking point, well, for this story. How much you want to bet? Because I think, well, the vic- well, the one that they revealed, he's, he was a palm-colored male. They don't know, we don't know who the other ones are, so I don't want to assume that the other four are white as well. 
<clears throat> but we know that the one that he was going after definitely was. And then, you know, they love to tack on that whole B.I.E. crap. And we know that ain't nothing but some B.S. too. And then the whole separatist thing as well. But watch, they're going to spin this to turn it into that particular narrative because they have to and they're going to continue to pump this out there <clears throat> because they feel like it's a sigh of relief when it's not a palm color person pulling the trigger. But like I said, this guy had a motive as far as we know why. Now, that's the motive that was given. We're not entirely sure if that's the motive of what if that is the actual motive, because he's no longer here to tell his side of the story. Dead men don't talk. But like I said, when it comes to most cases where a black person does this kind of thing, it usually goes back to discrimination and it goes un, un, uh, un, uh, excuse me, unseen. Basically, it goes unheard when he tries to tell people about what's going on. They just ignore it. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. If you haven't done so already, please follow me on Twitter. Have your notifications turned on and I will talk to you in the next one.